The following is brought to you by PaulAkers.net. So we're going to be flying from our wonderful camp in Montreal today to Sussex campers over in the United Kingdom in Horsham. Thanks, Richard. You know, and I'm going to say without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Daniel because Daniel's got all the goods. I haven't got anything. So we're going to get an amazing tour. Daniel, it's all yours. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Uh, welcome to the United Kingdom. Uh, welcome to Sussex Camper Vans here in West Sussex. And um, we're so excited to be able to share a little with you today. Uh, you know, we moved to this site. We've been running this business in its current form for about 10 years. Uh, and it's had its ups and it's had its downs. Um, we produce a product that looks like this, a range of mini RVs, pop-top camper vans, a Volkswagen, uh, autocaravanas, uh, pick your words, uh, uh, car. Uh, this is the kind of product we're producing. It sounds like we export to Europe, but we don't yet. We concentrate on the British market. This wow. is based on a Nissan NV200, and these come from the great country of Japan, of course. So the business has been fantastic, but we've had challenges. Staff turnover has always been a problem. I've always loved and enjoyed the people who work for me, but it's been difficult. I've been mystified why people have often kept leaving when I didn't think they should. Um, materials provision, stock outs, shortages, every single day, we ran out of something and we have a huge range of products we need to do this job. We're buying from many suppliers. And um, there was a lack of standardization. The quality of the product was variable. Different men would do the job in different ways. And we couldn't seem to get a consistent method and a consistent end result. Um, we'd already been exposed to the Toyota production system. We'd, we'd got involved with various production engineers who'd helped us a little. And one Saturday, I had a little time and I clicked onto YouTube and I thought, let me see if I can watch something about TPS and learn a little more. And up popped a video. I think it was the Upwork tour of Fast Cap with Paul A. Akers. Never heard of you, Paul, at that stage, but I thought, well, this guy seems to be onto something. You kept me wrapped for the whole 30 minutes, and then I watched the second 30 minutes, yeah. so it must have been good. And uh, I thought, wow, this guy's, this guy's made the thing simple. Don't we all have a conviction that the truth should be simple? Um, so we're a work in progress. We started that journey perhaps 18 months ago, not even that, um, of having a 3S time, having a morning meeting, which we started small, uh, and just beginning this journey. We've got so much to learn. And if you see waste here today, please email us. We so want to know what you can see that would help us improve. But when we were asked by Richard to do this, I thought, no, we do have something to share though. If we watched this 18 months ago, we'd have learned something. So we just want to humbly share with you the journey we're on and where we're up to. Mm -hmm. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to start by talking about the whole business of standardization, talking about materials and how we've gone from having stockouts all the time to almost never having a stock out. We've had a couple in the last couple of weeks, but that's so unusual. We just generally have continuous materials provision on things large and small. We'd like to share with you a couple of pointers, things we've implemented that have helped us do that. So this little building here, we call this the materials center. It's actually two shipping containers and a conservatory, but let's pop in, <laughs> let's see Graham. Well, you know, we, we like to use our heads, not our wallets. Um, so we're gonna pop in here and see Graham. And I should introduce, I've got Samuel here with me today. Samuel Hernando Lopez, he's one of my sons. He's our operations manager, not because he's a Lopez, but because he's earned that position. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to Graham. Graham's here, our materials manager, Mr. Reed, uh, lifetime in pharmaceuticals before being exposed to Sussex camper vans. And he and Samuel are going to take you through a bit about Kanban, a bit about Kamishi Bai, and then Sam's going to show you the materials planner. So I'm going to surrender my headset. Hey, Graham, okay, how well, are you? Yeah, fine, thank you. Um, Good. Right, welcome to my store. Um, <laughs> so the, uh, my store works on two systems. So we've got um, consumable stock, which is on the outside here, and then stockable stock, which goes into the vans as the main build. Um, my consumable stock works on a Kanban system. So I've got the two bin system here, um, gray bin main stock, uh, yellow bin my Kanban stock. How the system works really is once I've consumed the stock in the gray bin, yellow bin goes to the top. The RFID card is then taken, scanned, that's automatically going to an RFQ, ready to go into a purchase order for ordering to the supplier. So what's wow. been very important to note about that, everyone, is they're doing it with RFID. I have never seen that done before. So it really makes a very good pokey. Okay, it's difficult to make a mistake with this. Yeah. 
Um, once I've scanned that, that goes into uh, my order bin up here. Then once the fresh stock comes in, I refill the Kanban stock, card goes back, bins gets changed over again. And the other thing I like also that I've never seen before, maybe other people have done on the two bin system, how you have a different color for the secondary bin, which gives yeah. you a good visual on the condition of that you're getting low somewhere. Yeah. So yeah, I can visually see from my desk now, um, in some cases where we're consuming extra stock, where we're doing sort of our lean, um, people using screws and stuff that we would norm not normally use. So we're um, using the stock a lot quicker. So I can actually see the bins and I think, right, I need to put some in an ordering with that supplier and I can manually add that to the purchase order. Right. Let me ask you a question, Graham. Did you guys see the different color two bin system somewhere? Is that something you guys came up with? I've never seen um, a different color two bin Originally system. I had um, a load of, when we originally started, loads of sort of second hand bins at all various colors. So it wasn't ah. clear on what we had. So ah. that's why we went over to the two okay. colors. Good. good, good, good. I like good. the two colors as well. <clears throat> and good. also wherever we are in the factory is a yellow bin is all, also donated to a material store. So everything in material store is yellow. Ah, okay. Very good. So next, Graham is just going to quickly show us our Kamishi by board. Do you want to just quickly show us, Graham? Okay, the Kamishi by board um, runs all our main stock. So um, on my Kamishi by board, we've got daily tasks, weekly tasks, monthly tasks. Um, this is also set up with the RF, RFID cards. So each card, um, three parts really, it's got the go, no go. So everything in red, I still need to do. Green is completed. Um, and then each of the cards has obviously got the QR code on it. That takes me to uh, a document for the main supplier. So that's our Gemba Docs or SOP, um, which takes you to the document to show you how to do that process. So if I wasn't around or somebody not familiar with the system, I could actually go in there and actually do an order. Also, <clears throat> the cards are, again, RFID card. So I can scan this now, and this will take me to that supplier order purchase orders. <clears throat> which have been raised. Um, if you have a look at the card, I'm on a two week lead time. So I can actually go through there and order the next two weeks lead time. So we've got week 32, week 33, week 34, and they're all complete, ready to be sent off to the supplier. So Graham, See? let me ask you a question. On the daily ones, those are yep. tasks that you need to be completed. So the RFID would bring up a video or a process sheet. Is that what would happen? So the, the actual... Um, RF, um, the QR code. So the RFD will bring up an open RFQ. So um, some of the stuff like this supplier here, Wembans, is some of the wood that we use is a consumable. Some of it is stockable. So it's a crossover between the two. So it's, okay. it's just making sure that I actually go and check on a daily basis that we got the correct stock. I see what you're saying. Okay. So, yeah. So to elaborate, the QR code... The QR code is very simply the process, and then the RFID allows you to actually do the process, actually do the order. It's oh, like a shortcut to doing really order. good. And let me ask you this then, Samuel. On the card itself, is there any verbal, or is there any written instructions, or it's strictly digital with an RFID, RFID and then the it, combo? So then it, it's the pretty much strictly, yeah. strictly, strictly digital in terms of the, it's all on the process. Um, Oh, but, but it does say about, what does no, it does say some. There's a word there that tells oh, yeah, you. The word two clue. weeks. Yeah, no, so no, no. two weeks. Southern foam. Southern foam. Oh, yeah, foam. that's the yeah. supplier name. Yeah, the supplier okay, name. Okay, go go to the top one. I want to see the top row real quick. What do the top ones say? Uh, okay. Road radio, Citrus signs, okay, MID the, portal. Okay, so these are all vendors, correct? Correct. Yeah. These are all. So you have some clue also. what you're doing. You have some clue what it's about, rather than just uh, having to scan it to figure out what it's about. Yeah, it gives you it gives you a prompt if you like. Right. What it, okay, got it. Yeah. All right, clear. Right. Next, I'll show you uh, our materials plan. I said, let me explain the problem that this solves. We've got some stock as floor stock consumables in the coloured bins, but we have got other items that either are very bulky, or sure. are very expensive, or are made to us to order. So we don't want to carry those as as whip as as excess stock. So this lists those items by job number, by chassis number of the vehicle and the color coding helps us understand direct from our ERP system how the provisioning of those is going. So would you like to explain a little bit more about how it works, Sam? 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that gives you the material status, if you like, of all of the jobs. Um, so green means that the, the uh, stock has been physically picked to the location it's going to be consumed in. Yellow means it's available stock, but hasn't actually been moved yet. Anything orange is an order that is due to arrive on time. And anything red is something that's going to be late. It's going to actually crash production. Um, uh. So it needs to be resolved. So you can see here, we've got a red one here under the gas section. That's a genuine thing that we're trying to resolve right now. That means that we haven't got that gas tank for this particular job number here. Okay, so let's identify each one of the horizontal lines is an actual job you're working on. Correct. So each each horizontal line is a job, is a, is a, is a vehicle, if you like. And the vertical line at the top, what's it say at the very, very top? What, what, what's the column read? The date or what is it? What is that? Yeah, that well, one. All of this. So this, yeah. these are groups of materials. So these are like kits, if you like. So okay, each it. department is grouped into a kit. So that's the, the tank kit for the gas system we we put okay. on it. So watch out for is when you see some yellow. When there's some when when there's some red, that means the materials provision is going to crash production, and as far as the system can see, it can't be fixed. So we're just looking out for that red color. Can I assume that the car at the very top, the van at the very top, is the one that you're working on that's the most most complete, and also the one that's going out the door, and it's sequenced that way as well. Correct. So it's all sequenced in production order. So this is right. like the production line, if you like. So the further okay. down, some of these haven't been started and it gives us view. So we, we can see an error or a problem in materials 10, 20 weeks out without it actually hitting production. So at any Samuel, one time, it looks like you're working on four to five vehicles or more than that? That's about right. Yeah, about four to five. We try and keep the whip fairly low. Okay, got it. Are, yes. are the vertical columns in the order that you basically work on the car, on the van? We're working on that to a, to a degree, yes, but we're working on, on reordering them. So the order of the columns hasn't been, we haven't fully got that down, but that's, that's something we're working on. Okay, because that, well, that would make sense. And if you saw a red one in the very first one, that would trigger like lots of flashing lights. If you saw the red one at the last one, it might give you an extra day or two days to, to go and do something. Yeah, exactly. And another thing to note is if it's blue, that's actually an order that we can make in time that we haven't made. So for example, here, you can see some blue saying we should be ordering invert, which is actually an inverter. So it gives us, it gives us quick visibility. So we have a shortage meeting every day and we can just go through, just look at the dashboard and make sure that everything is going as it should. And all the reds are going to be resolved and be turned into oranges or Perfect. greens. Brilliant. And you wrote that yourself? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we wrote this in-house. I'm actually software developer, so I developed this, this screen. Okay. Some people like to know what the foundation to our ERP system is. And actually, we, we learned from Toyota Materials Handling in Europe here. They use an open source system, which is developed in Belgium, called Odoo, O-D-O-O. Um, it's open source, the, the kernel. You can use it yourself, uh, but you do need some development help. Uh, to develop but we had an outsourced company first and then Samuel's learned and he works with them and he does a lot of it now and Peter who's here on the laptop he's uh, just learning that same thing um, so uh, Odoo uh, based in Belgium is free to start with but believe me we've we put six figures of money into getting it how we want it <laughs> let's let's adjourn from here and go across to our upholstery department and talk a little about supplier collaboration and the principle of uh, Genshi Genbutsu uh, going to see uh, but also the principle which we've learned from Toyota of trying to help your suppliers to give you what you need. Um, typically, if a supplier is letting you down, the natural reaction is, well, let's find someone who isn't going to let us down. Let's just change horses. And Toyota taught us to say, well, no, actually, if their heart is to, to be a great supplier, maybe you can help them. So um, Samuel's going to explain a little about how this has worked out in practice. But we, we make seats and beds and things here as part of what we do. We sew them and we upholster them. And so we have to use upholstery foam. Uh, and we used to cut it ourselves. And gradually we've realized the supplier could do that for us. And so that's taken us on a journey with that supplier. So Samuel, we'd like to explain the, the, what was the problem and how we fixed it. Absolutely. So if we just head towards the back here of our upholstery department, um, where we actually assemble all the foam that we, we got from this supplier. And this is actually a bed right here um, that's being assembled of the very foam I'm talking about. Um, but if we, this right here is a piece of foam we would get cut. So I'm not sure if you could see that on the camera there. We were getting this foam bought and we were, we were uh, the supplier was um, we were having constant accuracy issues. So the supplier would, would come to us and they'd deliver 
um, the foam and it'd be like 20 mil, 30 mil out. And we would say, you know, what's going on? It's not to our templates. You know, you haven't cut it to our templates. And the supplier was very apologetic, but they didn't know why they were having the issue, why the accuracy issue was there. We were on the verge of moving suppliers and we were pretty much about to, to be honest. And one of, uh, one of the upholstery engineers, Luke said, why don't we go and visit Genshi Genbutsu and actually see what's going on and find out the roots of where these problems are coming from. So we did that. We went down there for about an hour, went through all of their production processes in and how they actually cut this foam. We established two main causes for the problems. The first one, believe it or not, was that we would send our purchase orders with metric measurements in millimeters, but they kind of found that confusing. They'd mix up sevens and twos, and we had some two-inch foam arrive in, uh, some one-inch foam arrive as three-inch foam, and they'd mix things up. And another, another issue we had was template size. So a big template like this, so this is the original form, to cut this at the end of the corner of the foam, very hard to get accuracy. And we could see that in their production process because we were there. They were showing us the actual machines they were using. So we, we, we came away and we said, okay, let's break down our templates into smaller pieces. So we broke them down into pieces like this. That smaller template, those smaller templates allowed us to have a lot more accuracy. We've had absolutely zero defects since that time, since we changed to these smaller, smaller templates. And this happened to serendipitously save us one hour off our, our bed assembly process. So by going and seeing the waste, we spent the hour and we gained that hour back in the first time assembling on a rock and roll bed job. on the first job. Why? How, how come? Because the layup happened to be simpler. It made it easier for us. The way we do the upholstery, the assembly process was quicker. One, because of accuracy issues. So right. we'd always have to over-process. So a right, template right, like right. this one, we'd, ha we'd have to add and make modifications and cut, cut bits off, add bits on. Gluing process, the process of how, how our bed actually upholsters together was simpler to achieve in this approach. The power Essentially, of Essentially, having, having, having spent time with them, you, you build relationship as well, don't you? People want to help you if you've gone and seen them and been respectful sure. and smiled and explained your pain. Actually, most people do want to do a great job and they do want to help you. So yeah. it was a great learning. And we're now saying, where can we apply that elsewhere in the business? What other subcontractor issues can we resolve by actually going to visit them? Um, so that's that's been really helpful. Awesome. Um, how are we doing for time? Well, time is flying. Um, another thing we'd <laughs> like to talk to you guys about is the whole process of sort uh, in the technical sense, in the waste sense. Uh, we've realized that um, you can't just sort once. I've titled what I'm about to say, iterative sort. Um, um, we realized, you know, we, we come from a sort of jobbing workshop background. I used to be a plumbing and heating awesome. engineer. Uh, some of my guys used to be motor mechanics. So you kind of want all the tools and all the materials and everything. You just want everything ready to go. Do you ever hit your head on those doors that are open like that? Uh, on these vehicles? Yeah. Uh, well, well, I'm five feet 11 and um, there's just a little gap right there. What about the corner? Um, the corner? You don't hit the corner of it when you walk by it? No. No, it's fine. No, happily not. We, we have had taller employees at times and we've put a little bit of foam okay, around good. it just to protect good, 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 good. These yeah. vehicles come from Japan and as you would know more than anyone, the Japanese don't tend to be very tall. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> less of a challenge for them than it is uh, perhaps if we were working in Ethiopia or somewhere, we'd, okay. we'd have more problems. Spencer's got quite involved in the lean agenda and, and we were just talking, Spencer, about how we've sorted stuff iteratively, how we've actually yep. done a, the, the obvious first thing to do, of course, is say, look, on the next job, all the tools you use, don't put them back on the rack, put them on this table so we can find out what they are. But that's, yep. that's kind of kindergarten level, but there's a lot more to sort than that, isn't there, Spencer? So, so when we've got to this point, do you, do you want to explain the process you've adopted and about marking yep. things and so forth? Okay, so when we came into this, or when I came into this department initially, there was tools everywhere. There was tool trolleys, big toolboxes and roll cabs everywhere. Uh, they was in various locations around this actual building. Um, there was tools on benches and we only work on a select few vans and we only use a select few tools. So um, we didn't need to use all of them. So the first thing to do was a major sort. So the way I've done that, is constructed these tool walls and took every tool out of the toolbox and placed them on the wall. And at that point, we then put labels on them to say what they were. Uh, so all the sockets marked numbers eight to 20, if you like, same with the spanners. And then all of the tools had 
uh, tape underneath them. And over the course of about five weeks, what we did was we put a little X below it if we hadn't used it for a week and a tick beside it to say that we had over a week. And in a five week period, we then quickly analyzed which tools we did and didn't need. So at that point, we just got rid of all the ones that needed, uh, sorry, all the ones that had an X beside them, we just totally got rid of straight away. The other ones, we kept them because there was obviously a use for them at some point, but we didn't know exactly what they were for. So then the next task was we labeled them again. And this time we marked on them what they were for specifically. So um, something like this, for instance, although the labels are not on there now, we've just changed the board in the last couple of days. Um, this here would have a label on it just like this. And this tells you that this would go for an NV uh, door hinge or for a a seat base basically. So this screwdriver, only this one, will do this task. And therefore, we've done the same thing for all of the tools basically. So we know which ones do every single task. And that, wow. that enabled us to lean the entire wall right down to what you can see here. There's no tools of excess anywhere. This is literally what you need. The next task would be to um, condense this down again over the next couple of weeks or months so that these tools then become line side where you're going to need to use them in the vehicle. So the next plan of attack would be literally stuff hanging from the ceilings, things that go inside the vehicles as you're working on them. Um, so it just makes it, you know, instead of excess motion, you've literally got the thing, the thing right there when you need it. And excellent, excellent. This, this has done that task for us in an amazing amount of time. Spencer, how long is the car in your area right there? A day, five days, a week? Um, normally in this department, they stay in here for about 48 hours. Okay, and then how many, how many cars do you have in there at a time? One? Um, two, two in this department at any one time. So you could almost have a cart, it seems like, with the, a cart that's specific to the van that you're using. You just roll that one cart up. You don't even have to think about what screwdriver to take. Yeah, yeah, the screwdriver absolutely. The cart is that cart, is that screwdriver. Yeah, our long term plan. Job. Our long term plan is that we're actually going to be doing a van a day. Um, so we have actually cut that process down radically. We're almost on the verge of uh, touching on that. We've we've got it up to about Absolutely. four in a week. So um, we're not far off of five in a week, which is really good for us, considering it used to be about two and a bit. And what specifically, <laughs> this is, Spencer, this... are you doing? What, what specifically are you doing in that department? I didn't catch that. Um, in this particular department, we do two things. So there's pan, two pan around, have the, the camera pan around so we can see. So yeah. on, on this side of the building, this is where we initially cut the roof off of the vehicle and, and then make an elevating top for it. So as you can ah, see, it's got, a, okay. it's got a big hole inside. So we cut the, cut the roof off of this on this side. And on this side, we, we fit um, heaters in there, LPG conversion to all of the underneath. Um, and obviously put flooring and things like that in it. The, and also- Are most they, of these vehicles they, brand new? Um, we do new and secondhand vehicles. Okay. So a lot of the vehicles are um, pre-owned or pre-loved, whatever okay. you want to call them. And uh, you know, obviously you can't buy these straight out of the factory. They are uh, bespoke conversions basically. Right, so right, right. But this, is, this is how you see them. This would be straight from, uh, straight from an auction in Japan, and then we convert it to what is basically customer luxury. And what I didn't catch what car you're using from Japan. Is it Nissan, Toyota, um, what is it? So we, we basically, we, no, we actually do about four different brands in total. So we do okay. Renault, Nissan, uh, Vauxhall occasionally, and Volkswagen, we do the T6. So we do more of these little NV 200s than anything else at the moment because they're and what, very what popular. Brand, what brand is that, the NV 200? Uh, it's a Nissan NV 200. And what, what's your favorite one to work on in terms of just curious, which one do um, you work on? I actually like the Renault Traffic, which is okay. um, that, that particular model is the same for Vauxhall Vivaro. It's the same for uh, Peugeot Boxer, various other um, brands. There's about four brands all use the same body shell. They just rebadge them. Um, oh, but okay. I, like, I like working on those. Lots of space. Things are very easy to uh, get in and out of. So, oh, and unlike these, you can you can see when I stand in there, it's not a very big gap. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Spencer. Okay. Excellent. Excellent job. We should, we cool. should just we should just introduce you well to done, Gay here as well, who's 
Hello, guys. Hello. Hi, how are you? Uh, yeah, we do in this side uh, also what we you what you guys see on the other side. We try to separate the things. What tools you see there? It's for the roof dressing. So in mm -hmm. the department, uh, we somewhere we make the uh, roof while the right. others cutting out the roof. So these tools is for the dressing. Those okay. tools is for the cutting. Right. And why we wanted you to see this, guys, is because this board right here, this uh, eight by four panel, used to be full of tools. And just look at it right now. We have a new standard, actually. We've, we've decided to paint all our shadow boards black because your high contrast makes it faster and easier to see what's going on. Um, there's almost nothing on there, is there? Because no, lean is the good. art of subtraction. subtraction. Yeah. <laughs> say that to, we say that to each other every morning. We also yeah. say we're always looking for ways to improve, and we all say welfare, yeah, quality, quality, simplicity, and, and speed. And, and yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's good. Isn't that the truth? It's all so simple, isn't it, Daniel? Yeah. Lee, well, it, I think in life I've discovered, and especially in this world of two-second lean, if it's getting complicated, you've probably missed it. Yeah. Just don't think again, because actually, and you know, you've been really helpful, Paul, because a number of times you've said, oh, I think um, someone said to me on one of our groups just yesterday, I was talking about learning how to do fishbone diagram analysis, and might have been Alex Ramirez. Hi, Alex, if you're watching, who said, you know, Daniel, that's fine, but actually, I wouldn't bother. <laughs> You can go deeper by just learning to think better. You don't necessarily oh, need my gosh. that tool. Al Alex you know, is so, so amazing. Isn't that great? You know, I yeah. was going to say something so interesting is, you know, you and I have had a lot of dialogue, but you've also sure. had enormous amounts of dialogue with Richard, with Alex, with Tom, with all, all kinds of people way outside of me. And I think the beautiful right. thing about this community is that everybody's working together, helping each other. It's, it's not all coming to me at all. And that's so beautiful. Totally. And I, I guess, Paul, it's really gratifying for you. And, and actually, probably the times when you think, wow, I didn't come up with that. Isn't that great? I, I've given this bit of thinking. I, I've set in place a, a wheel in motion here that's actually generating solutions mm -hmm. that I had nothing to do with. And I'm just hearing those solutions. Mm -hmm. I remember when you when you first interviewed Alex talking about a daily video of improvements. Right. Uh, you said this is the Alex Ramirez standard. I didn't yeah, come absolutely. up with this. Absolutely. That, isn't, that, isn't that great? How oh, no. And there are so many other. Yeah, so many things that you guys are doing. I didn't come up with any of this stuff. I mean, I'm just uh, I'm just one of the team members enjoying the whole process. It's awesome. And it's uh, it's a blast, isn't it? Wouldn't have it any other way now. Never, um, never. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, thank you very much, Gerge. Um, You're we, we'd just like to we'll walk across to our integration department. We'd like to show you something about standard work. Um, and we have to, I'm not advertising it, but I would be a liar and I'd be deleterious in my duty not to mention the uh, the, the wonderful work of Tom Hughes and the product we use called Gembadox. Um, and we're going to show you what it does for us. The problem is this, you know, Mr. Ono said without standards, there can be what? No, no improvement. improvement. You've got to have a standard to improve from. You've got to have a starting point. And in our business, because there's so many things we do, we do it, it's so complex. Getting those standards written down has been a challenge over the years. We've, we've tried producing folders and diagrams. We tried sticking things on the wall. Nothing's really worked because it's hidden away somewhere. It becomes inaccurate. The Gembadox system lets you take an iPad or another product of your choice made by somebody else, take a photograph and send a text. That's all you do. You watch the process, ideally the man doing the process, pick up that iPad, take a photo, 120 characters explaining what's going on. That's all you do. And you can build as many steps as you want. It formats it for you. You can print it if you wish, but really the, the juice comes when you don't print it. It stays in the system. And so you've yeah. always got the latest version. So, so we're gonna jump into what we call the bridge here, Shades of the Starship Enterprise. Um, and we're gonna, we're gonna meet Ross, uh, who's gonna help you with Samuel to understand. He, Ross is, has masterminded a lot of the initial work of Gembadox and helping us just to, to capture what we're doing and we chose ross because although ross is a fairly practical man he isn't in production it's not his thing so he came to it with fresh eyes and he helped everyone document stuff so ross do you want to explain the the journey into gembadox and give us a couple of case studies off the screen yeah of course um so as daniel's already explained it's been really important that we standardize the processes that we go through um so what i've got up here on the screen are a few examples um what you see here is a screen that has many different Gemma docs on it. And on this one over here, here's an example of a Gemma doc. It's got a picture, clearly does display in the tools. It's got a short description and it just, you just follow through it step by step, exactly how a process goes. And so mm -hmm. this is a fairly simple Perfect. process. Um, and it means that 
we don't use it for training. We use it as a backup. So we train someone, we teach them how to use the tools. We give them time to learn it. We, get, we go through a process of training. This is for when they've already learned it. If a process has been updated, um, they can see that it's been updated. Um, Samuel will talk a bit about how that happens. Um, also, it's really important to note that these can all be done by tablets or phones um, to get really high quality pictures. You can see lots of detail and color. Um, we use mainly tablets because they're bigger. You can get all the information. You can have it landscape, and it means you can see everything much clearer. Um, how we implemented to begin with was by, first of all, blanket coating. We're going to try to get as many as we could. This has got some different details on it. And this is just for one particular department. This is the and original, then, right? Yeah. Okay. So this was of just a printout that Samuel had managed to start out for us. We noticed there were some documents that were missing, so we started using these forms. So one piece flow while people were in the vans working um, and they needed to find a Gemma doc, they would check to see if one existed for the process they were doing. And if it didn't, they would note it down here, um, having created one, and then we could add it into our system later on. Okay, so what you're <laughs> yeah. saying is you're demonstrating how you're documenting and identifying what processes need to be Gemma doc. Correct. Okay, right. You're not just happens. You're not just doing it with happenstance. Just no. Yeah. You have, you're very so deliberate. We, okay, got it. Yeah, very deliberate. We started with um, the beginning of the process, so mainly in Coachworks, uh, where you've just been, and we started with their first process, worked our way through on a particular van, and then we followed that van into the next department and did the same thing. Um, inevitably, there were the odd small process, or we did a long process and decided we should have shortened it down and cut it into smaller parts. Um, but that's a process we've gone through over quite a period of time. Okay. So the, the result is that if all the employees at Sussex win the lottery, except Daniel and Samuel, they can actually still build camper vans, even though it might take them six weeks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. Yeah, that's one. That's one way of looking at it. That's for sure. I don't. I don't suggest the lottery, though. It's not a good way to make money. <laughs> no, I don't recommend it. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, so then the next step, of course, we've got all the processes documented. We needed to link them into our ERP system so we could actually see which processes for each given vehicle were required. A bit like a materials requirement, you have process requirements. So what, which processes mm -hmm. need to be documented to be able to do this? Um, only issue was we had a very convoluted uh, work order sheet. So our work order sheet looks a bit like this. It's based on an output that we actually give to the client. It's the sales order. And it's got a lot of details on here. And then you can actually see here, I've, I've taken a, an example from our upholstery department of how they've highlighted in blue the parts they actually use. And you can see, basically, it's very, it's a lot of over-processing. They have to sort of dive into different areas to work out things like right. the, carpet, the carpet color and things like that. So what, what we, we did, what we actually used when we were at the beginning of thinking about this is we, I would recommend it to anyone watching this tour, we, we viewed that Paul Akers video called Lean Airline Ticket. No. Uh, and if you just, just, just take five minutes, watch that video, and you'll completely understand about how anything like this is actually a communication tool. And if the person reading it doesn't immediately get exactly immediately. What they need to get, immediately yeah. and i think that's the key word if you've got to to fiddle and diddle and look at this hey you're going to introduce defects and that's what's happening here that was the catalyst so so with informed by that thinking this is the next step on the journey Sam. daniel daniel hold on daniel hold. just so you know i'm gonna make a little funny story you're, you're quite the wordsmith dilatorious the juice fiddle and diddle uh, i i'm enjoying <laughs> listening to you okay go ahead you're so kind paul <laughs> okay yeah, so um, obviously inspired by the Lean Air airline ticket, we thought, how can we make this simpler? How can we make it so that you don't have to think about it? You can just do it. Um, so we, we, we made a, a work order sheet like this. So at the detail, it only has the two details you actually need to know. The color of the carpet, the floor, has a little diagram of the actual, that's actually a color picture of the colors. They both happen to be gray in this instance. And then below it, in order, the list of the processes with QR codes that you can scan. It opens up the Gemba doc and you can do the process. It shows you exactly how long it's going to take, 45 minutes in that instance. And you can just go through step by step, sign off each one and PDI it as you go. Wow. Wow. I you like really the fact that so you can grab QR your, you can grab your tablet right here. Okay. And then you can click uh, like this. And then you can hold, you can look at one of the Gemba docs there. And it jumps you straight through. Open the link. There we go. We're right there, ready to get on with that task uh, right here. Uh, so that's the task I just scanned. 
in under five seconds. It's on the screen. I'm looking at the live version. We can jump in. Uh, we can go next. We can jump into the picture and zoom right in to see detail. Um, you've got every chance to get it right. It's almost infallible. Wow, that is fantastic. Yeah, Tom has done a wonderful job with Gamma Docs. It's just the most amazing stuff. Yeah, so we've got a name check, Tom. Tom has been here to visit us as well. One or two folks have really helped us on this journey. We must mention Richard Fuller from County oh, Battery. Yeah. Richard's been amazing. Great guy, total giver, as Alex would say. He's, uh, yep. And Tom's, Tom's been over. I said to Tom, you know, you come and show us this thing, spend a morning with us and we'll launch it. Uh, so uh, we had a great time. Katie, shake Isn't your head. Great. Isn't <laughs> that I said the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> be what, careful. What, what, what other thing I just she's want my, to say? She's my yeah, filter. Yeah. Daniel and Samuel, uh, the, your technical team, people filming, uh, they're doing a phenomenal job. It's really, really good. We're grateful. Thank you. Thank you guys for doing this. Um, I think the last thing I'd like to do, let's just walk upstairs because, oh, we, we, oh, that's a good point. You know, we, we haven't had a chance to talk about visual control. I think you'll give us one minute on this. We'd love to introduce you to Rob. This area is what we call integration. This is where the vehicles get finally assembled. I've got Rob here who we're just going to hand over to for a moment. Uh, and we're going to talk to Rob a little bit about visual control and line side stock. So, uh, Rob, do you want to show hey, us what Rob. you've been working on with your trolleys? Yes. Um, well, if we go back over here. So when I first joined, all of our consumables, the so screws, nuts and bolts and whatnot, were all on the wall over there. And it's forever coming in and out of the van, walking all over there. So now we've taken them all off the wall, put them on this trolley. So one, Graham can come over in the morning, take our trolley away, refill anything that is empty, um, but also means we can wheel it into a more centralised position if we need to and refill our consumable tote trays that we have per van as well. Um, so it makes life a lot easier. I'm not walking halfway across the workshop wow. all the time. So perfect, yeah. excellent. So each of these bins has got our SKU number for the product. It's got our uh, official description of it. It's got a photograph of the product in the back of the bin as well. And excellent. it's really quick from a replenishment point of view to see if there's enough to, to handle that day's work. So we have Great a daily visual. milk round where Graham, who you met a little earlier, would interact with this. And if it's in this format, it's really easy for him to get it right, isn't it, Rob? Oh, it, oh it's so easy as well, because we've also combined what we had in a filing cabinet as well. Um, so see you, we're filing see. Cabinet, you can't see it, so we can't take it all I, visually. Can I, can I ask you a quick question, Rob? Yes, yeah, certainly. Rob, right? So how long have you been with the company? Um, I joined back in October. So what, what's your impression of the way business is done here compared to past jobs? I'm just curious. I'm not looking for a loaded question. It's not a loaded question. Just it, loaded question. It I'll was, give you that money in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it was completely, it's nothing like I've ever experienced before. Um, like I've come back, uh, come from a self-employment uh, background. So I've always worked mm -hmm. for myself. So coming into this environment where you're given the freedom to improve anything and fix what bugs you, it took me a little while to get my head around it because um, I've come into an environment where it's like, well, I'm not the, you know, I'm not at the top. And yeah, 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 I'm given yeah. this, you're given this freedom. And yeah, it took me a while, but it's an excellent way to do it because uh, you don't have to constantly come up with the ideas yourself. You can let that free reign go down to everyone that works here, which is okay. Good. So, Rob, I want to know it took you a little while to get your head around it. What does that mean, real quick? Um, it's the, it's, it wasn't normal to me. That's, I think, the biggest thing. And actually, credit to you, it wasn't until I actually read your book, I completely understood it um, and what the idea behind Two Second Lean was. And, and when you said it wasn't normal to you, what was not normal? You just used to command and control wherever the guy at the top always told everybody what to do. Is that what yeah, you said? and it's, I guess I've been working in organized chaos for however long I've been uh, working. <laughs> so, yeah, it wasn't until... I've always okay. been fairly organized, but it wasn't until this point where it's like, oh, I have another this question, makes so much Rob. more sense. Yeah, yes. you're really, your answers are great. So why do you think people are comfortable with organized chaos? What do you think is going on there? Um, tricky one. I think it's that limiting themselves to the free thinking. Um, I do find just through your school life and that you're taught to think in that way, which is wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it wasn't until learning all this lean stuff. It's like, well, actually, it's a completely different way of thinking. Um, it's very outside the box. 
So the answer Sorry. to your and, question and, essentially is education. You, 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 you've been re-educated to think a little differently or that there's another option. Yeah, I've, I've noticed it with my kids that they've only just started school. So they haven't been kind of indoctrinated, if you want to say right, that way. Right, right, um, right, right. That they are very uh, free thinkers still. And even what they say to me when we're doing stuff at home together, it's very lean. And it's then you kind of, it, that's what kind of made me realize actually it's kind of taken out of you when you go to school. So. That's a great point you're making right there, Rob, actually, that the nature of education system is that they they have to have one size that kind of fits all. But actually, God's made us all individual. We've all got this unique ability to create, come up with stuff, solve problems. And if that's bashed out of you, you're just told, just get back in the box. You know, I've got to tell you a story about a Romanian friend of mine who I worked with when I was plumbing. And he, when I met him, he was a bricklayer. And uh, he used to go on the jobs. Now, bear in mind, his English is a little sketchy. And he used to have ideas for the job to make the site better. And they used to look at him and say, from the neck down. Yeah. And I think uh... that, to me, that is the exact opposite of this. We're saying, hey, no, no, bring your body, but please bring your mind to work and bring your heart to work because that way we're all going so to So we together are, Daniel, and- we are here and most people are here. You can't see me. That's I can't it. see you, but I can imagine <laughs> the gesture, Paul. I'm, I'm yeah, there, yeah, mate. I'm yeah, on it. <laughs> yeah, Thank okay, you, Rob. That's, okay. that's awesome. No worries. Yeah, yeah really before good we, before both we, of you. Before- yeah, before we talk about lean culture, I just want to show you one little improvement in here that only happened yesterday, and I like it so much, I just want to show you. Is that all right? Have you got an extra 30 uh, seconds? Wait, wait, we, wait. we, um, you know, tool boards are great, and this is Zoltan. Uh, I call him Zoltan the Terrible because it kind of, he sounds like he should be a, a warlord. And um, Zoltan had all his, his tools up on this tool board, and he'd even painted it in our new standard in black, hadn't you, Zoltan? Do you, you want to grab Samuel's headset a sec? And so, uh, so Zoltan's making things uh, with wiring. He's got crimp terminals right here. And Zoltan, just, uh, just put that up on the uh, board there. Imagine you're putting it away from me. Can anyone see that? Look at that. Look at that. He's a young man, but look at the strain. And we had a little improvement time together yesterday. And I said, this is, this is terrible. And I thought if I were working here, I'd want my tools really near. So we made this. This is only about 24 hours old. Do you want to explain, Zoltan, what we made and how it's working for you? So pretty much uh, what we've made is all the tools, instead of having to reach for it, we decided we would lay it out all right next to me. So instead of having to stretch all the way up to the wall, I just need to go like this. And then I already have it in hand. And this uh-huh. is, these are all the tools that we use. Um, so it's all nice and tidy now. What, what, wonderful. Great job. Zoltan, you've, it's 24 hours in. Has it made any difference to how you're feeling at the end of your working oh, yes. day? Oh, yes, absolutely. I feel uh, much less strained. Sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, do a little dance. You, know. you do a Hungarian. Thank you. This impromptu. Yeah. I just more, wanted to more, show you this because because I'm so happy with this little more, improvement. More, more, Didn't take more, a more time minute. for the warlording. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes. Five minutes of thinking and ten minutes of implementation. Let's just walk upstairs because I want to just close out by talking a little bit about something harder to show you, but it's important to tell you about, and, and that's really about the whole issue of culture. Um, am I going up or are you going? To, are you going to walk backwards or am I going to walk backwards? Katie's going to walk backwards up the stairs. Um, we're going up to our client studio. We, as we're looking to close a customer, when we've shown them around, we take them up to our lounge area up here. And um, actually the client experience is really important. Along the walls here, I, I got the idea from number 10 Downing Street where our prime minister lives. They have pictures of all the previous incumbents on the wall up the stairs. And so I've got lots of client pictures, people picking up their vans, pictures of them on holiday. So as you're a oh, client cool. coming up my stairs, you can see all these pictures of other people having a fantastic time. And it just gets you in the mood to get out your visa card, which is very important. Um, yeah, Rob touched on this a little bit, the whole issue of lean culture. But I said right at the beginning how staff turnover was a massive issue here. And it wasn't that I didn't like the people. I'm not a hire them and fire them kind of person. I'm always very sad to dismiss anybody. Um, I'm just going to sit right here, Katie. Is that all right? Um, but we, we realized that this us and them thing, which has really wrecked British industry over the last two or three decades, um, is so pervasive and so negative. And lean has really helped us to see everyone on the same page. I mean, I don't wear my work polo shirt all the time, but I do quite a lot. And it's the same as the ones you've seen other people wearing. 
we've really tried to be on the same level when we have our morning meetings together. I wish I could share one with you. We absolutely encourage everyone to speak. You can interrupt, you can ask a question, you can tell me my idea is wrong. There are no wrong answers. There's nothing you can't say. And throughout the working day, you know, um, one of the guys in upholstery asked me recently as we were trying to improve how our rock and roll bed system, a bed that becomes uh, a seat, is assembled. Oh, if your idea doesn't work, Daniel, can we go back? Can we change it? I said, of course. If your idea is better than mine, I would love to have your idea. And I make it a point. I've learned a lot from Ken Blanchard's book, The One Minute Manager. If you haven't read that, you're not even in the world of management. It's only that thick. Yeah, it's written yeah, for men. Yeah, yeah. It takes 10 minutes to read. Get Ken Blanchard's book. It's One written minute manager. for men. <laughs> it is. And he's, he said, I don't read books, Jeremy. My wife reads books and tells me what they say, which I find yeah. very efficient. Um, it's very lean. Let me, let me um, eat more. <laughs> but um, but uh, Ken Blanchard says, catch people getting things right. Right. And, you know, in our in our team meetings in the morning, in our in our morning meeting, we have a, a section we call gratefuls where we encourage people to express thankfulness for something in their lives. But we also have a session of team praise where we encourage people to just acknowledge a colleague who's done something useful, something helpful for them. And it's really positive. And I think you get a lot further by encouraging the good and being positive and recognizing achievement than you ever do by criticism and correction. And it's a, it's a hard lesson. I think a lot of entrepreneurs are hard on themselves and then they're hard on other people. I know that's true of me. And it's been a journey of learning about this lean culture of looking for the, the idea, the spark from everyone and encouraging that. Uh, that's really changed how this business feels. There've been times I didn't like my business. I didn't want to come to work. I didn't want to be in the space. And happily those times in the distant past. Generally speaking, I really like it. You know, after Christmas this year, our first meeting back, I said to everyone, who's missed being at work? And, you know, quite a few hands went up because actually we mostly like being together. We like doing stuff together. I don't say we never have a crossword, but it's a lot more like family and a lot less like employment than it ever used to yes, be. And yes. uh, we have to be thankful uh, for the learning of others who've taken us on this journey and to God, most of all, for introducing us ultimately. But it's, uh, it's a blast. And if you're not quite on the lean journey yet and you've somehow jumped onto this Zoom call, uh, you've got to read the book. Well, you, what, what did you say? And ultimately you said to God? Is that what you just yeah, said? Yeah, that's right. Well, we have, I mean, ultimately, it's the creator who gave us all the ideas and the, the brains to think them in the first Well, I'm, I never, I, I rarely ever say this. I say it individually to people. But the reason why Lean works, so everybody knows, is it's simply the gospel dressed up in a business suit. It's about caring. It's about respecting other people. It's about loving your neighbor. It's about honoring the creativity of other people. If you look at the biblical principles that uh, are talked about. They are one, uh, ultimately we're charged by God to be a good steward of the resources we've given, been given us. And ultimately that's all we're doing here in Lean is we're taking the stewardship of the people, the resources, the money, everything we have and trying to become better stewards of it on a daily basis. This is exactly the gospel dressed up in a business suit. I don't say it very often, but that's actually why it works. Totally, and and I, I think, um... There's a, there's a lie going around. I won't give it a name, but the lie is that if I win, you lose. Right. Uh, or if I win, the customer loses. If the customer wins, I lose. And actually, we can all win. It's right. possible to do business and life in a way that every interaction is a benefit to both parties. That's what Absolutely. I have believed to be true and found to be true. And that's that's the place we're starting from. And Absolutely. certainly, Lean has, Lean has really connected with, with my Christian convictions. Uh, and with our um, understanding of, of the value of each individual as made in the image of God. And it's, it's, it's all very congruent. It's all, mm -hmm. it just fitted in so well. Uh, I can't see a negative side, folks. No. That's, Daniel, that's fantastic. Are we, are we ready for questions now, Daniel? Yeah, totally. Do you want to come and join me, Samuel? I'm sorry if we've overrun a little, people. I do apologize. It, it was valuable, very it was valuable. A very, very valuable tour. I mean, I just, I'm just i blown away with what happened with Walters and Wolf uh, a couple of weeks ago, and now I'm blown away with what happened here. And it's just going to keep getting better because everybody's got so much to contribute. So but there's no sharing, problem. Sharing, learning, and growing. That's what we're all yeah, about. Yeah. Laura, questions? Hey, Daniel, how did you guys implement Gemba Docs? Gemba Docs. I mean, um, we, we had the pain. We knew we needed to do something. I mean, Katie was holding this uh, camera one right now. Uh, we tried to document our process by which we fit gas. I think she got up to 83 steps. She'd spent two days typing it at desktop publishing it. 
And then we showed it to the guy doing it, and he said, "No, no, 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 no." no, 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 no. <laughs> and Katie was at this at this point. I think Katie was seriously considering uh, thumping somebody, and yeah. I was concerned it might be me. Um, uh, so you know, and this is the pain that that Tom had in realizing we needed something like Gemdocs. So it's it's how I put it is this: Look, it's take a photo, send a text. The the implementation we had was this: Look, we're already making the product. We're kind of backwards right here. So we're doing it. So we do know how to do it. So we just want to capture what we're doing. So we bought some iPads. We gave them out to everyone. We left the whole thing open. There's no revisions, nothing locked. For the first period of time, we just said, please, when you do a process, give it a name, take a photo, send a text, photo of your tooling, photo of the materials, and photograph each step, and just put 120 characters about what you're doing. Just do that. We did that for three, four months. Oh, it was frilly. We got some crap and we got some good stuff, but we learned how much detail is enough. We learned about the style. We started thinking about how we're going to name things and structure it. Mm -hmm. Then we kicked it to Ross. We said, okay, Ross, we've got so far. We want you to take this on now, start to index it and document it. And then Ross started cleaning them up, standardizing the format, fixing some grammar errors and improving it. And going around also, another thing which is really key with standard work is somebody has to test that the standard work's good enough. So Ross started doing some of the processes himself as a non-trade guy to see if it works. And that threw up a load of other stuff. And then the next step we've taken just in the last two or three weeks is that Samuel's jumped in to connect those standard work SOPs to our ERP system. The ERP system, our system sees materials and it sees this the bill of materials requiring work, requiring routings. So we then said, OK, let's connect what the standard work procedures are to the routings in the bill of materials. And that's what those sheets he's doing. is. So, so as that process okay. completes, we'll be able to issue a complete list with QR codes of yeah. all the processes you need to do to fulfill this work order. OK, Daniel, I'm going to interrupt you here. So the answer to the question from my perspective is simply this. You could have Tom Hughes come in, as Daniel did. Or Tom has produced a lot of great videos that you can quickly watch on Gemba Docs to see how to implement it. It's actually very, very simple to do. Correct, Daniel? Sorry, I, I was probably answering a bigger question, which is how yeah, we fit yeah. it into the business. Yeah. Remember, yeah, we, have, Gemba, we have 30 other questions we got to answer. That's why we got to be Gemba Docs could not be simpler. And the support yeah. we've got from Tom and his team has been awesome. I'm not trying to sell it, but you'll be a fool not no, to try no, it. And it's all okay. Tom did a great job. Next. He did, did a great job. Yeah, absolutely. Next one, Laura. Okay. Apple what fire. is one thing you would have done different in your journey and what is one what is the next challenge for your team just one thing what's the, the most important thing, thing you do different had started it sooner <laughs> Amen. why did i waste okay. all these years okay not doing and this? then what and then what was the second question laura real quick what is the next challenge for your team what's the next big challenge what's the next thing you're facing it's like this standard work thing is like rewiring a house until you finish and Throw the switch. You don't okay. get the voltage right around. Okay, we've, so we've got to get the, the final connection. Work. You're finishing the finishing the standard work piece. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Next question. Let's wrap it. Fire. One last question, and then the rest are just things, suggestions for you guys. So, what are the benefits of two second lean KPI and people wise for you guys? Uh, could you ask me that question again, please? Sure. What are the benefits of two second lean KPI and people wise for you guys? Okay, KPI wise, initially we saw people leave. Initially, uh, we had some some disquiet about it. In recent times, we've seen a gradual organic growth in output, and and a massive reduction in staff turnover, and a lowering of my blood pressure. If that's a KPI, mm, that's, yeah. that's very important actually. I think there's a leveling of the load that happens when you do lean. It's not on few superstars it kind of becomes everyone's corporate responsibility and that's something that i think is is, is that i've noticed yeah the process is running the business rather than me running the business mm -hmm. i love it, it not answer. entirely but it's it's going that way sure 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 we're all we're all learning next laura okay last question or two last questions what is your biggest waste you are up against and then what are you doing about it well mr ono said Try and express all your waste as waiting time because then you can see it. If a man's got nothing to do, he needs to stand still. So we are on that journey of really trying to manifest all our waste as waiting. It's working. So that's now becoming the biggest waste. And we need to do some more re-leveling, some more high junker to, I see it like playing Tetris. 
You know that game where you put the little yep. blocks in the... Yep. And um, my analogy is this. If in Tetris, if you could melt all the blocks and make them liquid, they just pour into the, the thing, right? So cross-training people, simplifying things so more people can do them, they can be done in more areas, is like liquefying your labor. So you can play Tetris a lot Wonderful better. answer. Wonderful do you like answer. that? Yeah, wonderful yeah. answer. But it's, it's, it works for me. That's what we're trying to do. A lot more cross-training, right, cross-skilling, right, 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 and right, de-skilling right. of the process. The simpler you make the process, the more people that can perform the process, the more you have a flexible work staff, and the less right. people are waiting, and the less waste there is. Perfect. Sure. Okay. That's, that was the last one, Laura. Um, there's a few more, but I'll just save them since you're coming up on time and yep, we I'll send them to you and maybe you can answer them and we can send them out. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Daniel, Samuel, Sussex camper van team, you did an absolutely awesome job. Paul, as always, really, really cool. And, and we just love the philosophy. That's what we're sharing. Thank you so much for doing this tour. And uh, we're going down in the archives. You'll see it on the AME Connect channel and on Paul's channel very, very shortly. So I just want from everybody to a big thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, folks. We do appreciate it. If you see anything we could learn, please, you send it in, email us. We'd you know, love to hear from you. You know, Daniel, I just might make one more comment. You know, you say you first saw me on Upflip. Well, I've done many, many Upflip videos. They're a great organization and they're actually doing another one with me. I think it's my fifth interview with them on product innovation, how to develop products today. That's uh, right after you. So. There's another upflip awesome. up. Brought to you by PaulAkers.net, where you'll find all Paul's books and lean resources for free, free including the new two-second lean play app, like Audible, but free. Chapter to one. listen to lean is lean on the two-second lean play app at PaulAkers.net.